Good evening, everyone. Caesar Bug and I are here for another episode of Bedtime Stories in the Barn. This story that we're going to read this evening is called A Boy and a Jaguar. It is by Alan Robinowitz and illustrated by Katya Chien. I'm standing in the great cat house at the Bronx Zoo. Why is this jaguar kept in a bare room, I wonder. I lean toward my favorite animal and whisper to her. What are you doing, my father asks. I try to explain, but my mouth freezes, just as I knew it would. I am a stutterer. If I try to push words out, my head and my body shake uncontrollably. The teachers at school put me in a class for disturbed children. He's not disturbed, my parents say. We're sorry, the teachers answer. But whenever he tries to speak, he disrupts the whole class. The teachers think I am broken. Am I? But I can do two things without stuttering. One is sing, only I can't sing very well. And the other is talk to animals. Every day I come home from class and I go straight to the closet in my room. I bring out my pets. I have a hamster, a gerbil, a green turtle, a chameleon, and a little cardinal snake. I close the door and I talk to them without stuttering. I tell them my dreams. I tell them that I want to be able to speak to everyone else. I know that my pets listen and they understand. Animals can't get the words out just as I can't get the words out. So people ignore or misunderstand or hurt them the same way people ignore or misunderstand or hurt me. I make a promise to my pets. I promise that if I can ever find my voice, I will be their voice and keep them from harm. My parents try everything to help me. Doctor after doctor, medicine and hypnosis. Nothing works. But my father knows the one thing that does work. He takes me to the great cat house at the Bronx Zoo. I go straight to the cage with a lone jaguar lean over the railing and put my face against the bars. I whisper my promise to her fluently. I get through school by learning tricks that stutterers learn. I learn when not to speak, when to avoid situations, and when to just not be around people. When I'm in college, my parents enroll me in an experimental program. There, I'm told that I am a stutterer and I always will be a stutterer. Always. But the teacher tells me that if I work hard, I can completely be a fluent stutterer. I think about how my mouth moves and air flows. And for the first time in years, I can speak without stuttering. I can speak, but nothing has changed on the inside. I still feel broken. I go to the Great Smoky Mountains to study black bears. Alone in the forest with the animals, I am at home. Later, in Belize, I am the first person to study jaguars. The jungle makes me feel more alive than I have ever felt before. I 
I learn how to follow and capture jaguars for study before releasing them back into the wild. I am so happy. But as fast as I catch jaguars and gather information to help them, hunters are killing them. They fear the animals and they prize their bodies as trophies. I need to get more areas protected for the jaguars. I want to keep the promise I made to the pets in my closet. I have a voice now to speak for the animals. In the capital city of Belize, in the office of the prime minister, I give 15 minutes to make my case. 15 minutes. I can't stutter and distract from my message. I have to convince one of the poorest countries in Central America with no protected areas in the country that it has to save jaguars. Later that day, the Prime Minister votes to set up the world's first and only Jaguar Preserve. And here's a picture of the preserve. Back in the jungle, I know all the jaguars in the study area from their tracks. But one day I come across a completely new track, the biggest male jaguar tracks I have ever seen. I follow the prints for hours. Not wanting to be caught in the jungle at night without a flashlight, I turn around to go back to camp. There, right behind me, is the jaguar. He must have been following me. I know I should feel frightened, but I squat down and I look into the jaguar's eyes, just as I had with that sad old female jaguar at the Bronx Zoo. But this animal isn't sad. In this animal's eyes are strength and power and sureness of purpose. We are both whole. We are both at home. I lean toward him a little tiny bit, the way I had at the Bronx Zoo so many years before. And I say, thank you. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. It's actually a true story. And I hope you come visit us again sometime. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.